Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in content related to becoming a genetic counselor or applying to genetic counseling grad school. So today we're doing a follow-up on my video from last week, Wednesday. Last week on Wannabe Wednesday, I posted a video about asking for letters of recommendation. And if you are applying to school for 2022 admission, it is time to think about asking for your letters of recommendation. Um, if you're curious about who to ask for those letters, how to ask, that type of thing, how many you need, check out my first video. Today what I'm going to be doing is answering Q&As that I've gotten on Instagram and YouTube about letters of recommendation. So let's just go through them. Here we go. Um, in your opinion, is it acceptable or appropriate to ask a professor you had and did well in their class from years ago, even if you didn't graduate recently? Or is it better to enroll in a new class and hope to establish a more recent connection with a new professor? Good question. For myself, I didn't have to think about this because I applied, I took one year off between undergrad and starting grad school. So it hadn't been long since I had been in touch with the professors. I ended up asking for letters of rec. But my take on it would be is if your grades are already, your grades are good to excellent. So to me, that means like a 3.5 or above for your overall GPA and pretty good grades in your prereqs for GC grad school. I think it's just fine to get a letter of rec from a professor who knew you in the past, even if you didn't have a super strong relationship with them. Um, I would always start by just asking that first before you consider the additional expense of taking a whole additional coursework, not to mention the time and commitment that that takes. So what I want you to know about professors is part of their job is writing letters of rec. They are very accustomed to receiving requests from, for letters of recommendation. So I don't want you to be nervous. I know it feels like quite burdensome, especially to bug a professor who you haven't talked to in potentially years, but it is okay. You need to just do it and get it done with and see what they say. So I would type up a nice email to that professor explaining why you enjoyed their class, what you learned in it, and how it ties to genetic counseling graduate school. A quick sentence to explain what genetic counseling grad school is if they're the type of professor who might not know about this career and kind of lay it on a little thick, but not too thick and go in for the ask. Ask for that letter of recommendation. Don't forget to include the things I mentioned before, like your transcript, include what grade you got in their class, um, a copy of your CV, personal statement if you have one that's clean enough to send, um, and a list of all of the schools you'll be applying to and the due date so that they have all that information up front to make the decision. But yes, I think you should ask. Go ahead and ask that professor even though it's been a few years. Don't forget to ask if they can provide a strong letter of recommendation or positive re letter of recommendation in your email uh, because we don't want any, just any, you know, mediocre run of the mill letter of recommendation ideally. Worst case scenario, they say no and that's okay. I mean, that's why you're thinking about this in early August. You've got plenty of time to come up with backup plans and I'd think about then reaching out to a different professor that you had even though it has been a couple of years and think about taking that class maybe and establishing a relationship with the professor. Okay, that was a good one, I liked it. Um, next question, suggestions for getting a rec from classes that you aced but had 400 people in them. It seems impossible to get a good letter of rec when you went to a big, big public school. Yes, I feel you. I had very poor attendance in my lectures um, that had, you know, 200, 400, 500 people in them at UW-Madison in undergrad. And I'll be honest, I didn't even go to my individual sections either when it wasn't required. So I, again, as I've said many times on this channel, what was I doing in undergrad? I had lots of other priorities besides grades. Um, so I get it. Yeah, I didn't really establish connections with my professors until my senior year when I realized I would be applying to graduate school. And had I not discovered genetic counseling until later, I probably would have never tried to establish those connections. So I feel ya. What I would say for this person is, okay, you aced the class. That's awesome. I would, if you're still on campus, pop into office hours, or if office hours have gone remote due to COVID, find out that professor's office hours and pop on electronically. Um, and introduce yourself. I'm Katie Hornberger. I took Genetics 402 with you in fall semester of 2020, and I really enjoyed the class. 
Um, since that time, I've been thinking about becoming a genetic counselor. In your class, I learned how to think about different forms of inheritance. I learned how genetic diseases can affect a family. And the class really further inspired me to become a genetic counselor. So I'm planning to apply to grad school this fall. And I was wondering if you'd be able to provide me a letter of recommendation for graduate school because I learned a lot from your class. I think it is one of the foundations to my knowledge in genetics. And I got an A in your class. And see what they say. That's what I would do. Um, if you're no longer on campus, there's no virtual office hours that you can find, I would just go ahead and send an email. Same idea, same things I've talked about before about what attachments to include, include your grade, and so forth. Again, I know it's intimidating. We all know professors are really busy and they have a lot to do and you feel bad asking. I felt bad asking too. That is just part of the process. You need these letters of recommendation to get into school. And these professors are accustomed to receiving requests like this. So you just gotta ask, get it over with. You're gonna feel so good once you get that ask over with or send that email off. Also try not to be discouraged if you don't hear back right away. If a week passes and you don't hear back, it's summer, some people are on vacation. I just follow up up to three times with additional emails or visits into office hours until you get a yes or no answer either way. All right, what else? Oh, okay, how about this one? I briefly mentioned that I was applying to graduate school and one of my supervisors from an advocacy role said that they would write me a letter of recommendation, but then later followed up with me and said, actually, could I provide a letter of recommendation draft and they would review it and make any necessary changes and send it off for me. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's something that some professors do ask for, or some recommenders do ask for. I actually had that exact same thing happen to me with one of my recommenders. She said she was about to retire and I knew she was incredibly busy and literally retiring that month, the month that I asked her. Um, and I think she just, she had a lot on her plate and she was ready for retirement and didn't wanna write that letter of recommendation herself. So what I would encourage you to do is look up a bunch of drafts of letters of recommendation and find some that feel like really good examples to you and write a draft. Make sure it's in draft format. So obviously you're not going to include a signature of that person. Um, you're going to make sure it's clearly in draft format. And when you email them, you'll be very clear to them. Um, thank you so much for your willingness to write my letter of recommendation for genetic counseling graduate school. You requested a draft of a letter or a template and here's one. Please feel free to make any changes you see fit and let me know if you have any questions. And again, I would still include your CV, your personal statement, transcript not so much if it's a supervisor from a different position who's not gonna be talking about your grades. Um, and then also the list of grad schools they'll be needing to send the letter to. Uh, very important, just like with your personal statement, I know none of us want to take the time to write another letter, but you actually get to have a little control here and you can make sure you include some really specific examples that your supervisor may or may not have thought of, of, you know, how, how you behaved in that job or um, what positive traits or characteristics or skills you brought to that specific job. So try to think of it as a perk that you're getting the opportunity to kind of see the first draft of this letter before it gets passed off to be edited. All right, what else have we got? Somebody else writes, hi Katie, do you have any tips on requesting letters of recommendation for patients? I, I think they mean for students who have been out of undergrad for a long time, like five plus years. Obviously, employers and genetic counselors you're shadowing are an option, but what do you think and what do you do when you've been out of school for a long time? I don't know if it's appropriate to reach out to old professors. I have one in mind who I had a good relationship with and did well in their class, but it's been years. I don't know if it's still appropriate to ask or outdated by now. Yeah, kind of like that previous, um, the previous question, I would still ask. I would just send a nice email, take your time writing the email, um, reintroduce yourself. I took this course with you in fall of 2015 or whatever it is, and I really enjoyed the class. I still think of it often, and I know it's going to be a foundation for my studies in genetic counseling. Explain what genetic counseling is, that you're applying to grad school. I would go in for the ask. You have nothing to lose. And again, make sure you ask, do you feel you could write a positive letter of recommendation for me? I mean, if you're five years out of school, I assume you didn't know you wanted to go into genetic counseling right away, right after school, and that's okay. Not everyone knows that. Not everyone goes straight from undergrad to grad school. So I think you should just make the ask, 
give it a go. And if the answer is no, think of a backup professor and ask them as well. And if that answer is no as well, then move on to your other options um, for letters of recommendation. Okay, last one. Hello, I plan to apply for the 2023 cycle and have done no lab research. What do you say this is something I should work on to make me a more appealing candidate? Not necessarily. Um, I was a research assistant for just one semester and it was um, autism, coding of autism videos or coding of interviews with individuals with autism. So I honestly didn't learn that much in that one semester of working like I think it was just 10 hours a week or so as a research assistant. Um, you don't have to work in a lab. You don't have to have lab experience to be a great candidate for genetic counseling. I know many students who have not worked in the lab and have gotten in. That's just one example, especially of the people who come from the more science heavy majors of a place where they can request letters of recommendation from lab managers. But advocacy experience, genetic counseling internships, all of those types of things are also fantastic. If you feel like your CV is pretty strong that you have advocacy, you have genetic counseling exposure, you have good grades in your prerequisites, and you have a strong personal statement, I definitely wouldn't push for the lab experience unless that's a passion of yours and you're curious to get more and see what it's like to work in the lab. Since you're thinking about applying for the 2023 cycle, I want to answer this other question that I get a lot from people I do informational interviews about, about what it's like to be a lab genetic counselor. Because I worked in a lab uh, that did genetic testing for about a year and a half. And being a lab genetic counselor, I wasn't actually in the lab. Like I, I worked remotely and counseled patients. So I was essentially still a clinical genetic counselor, but employed by a laboratory rather than something like a children's hospital. So, um, yeah, I'm never going to be back in the lab. I, I can't imagine I'll ever be in a wet lab or in a lab like that autism research lab because research isn't a huge passion of mine. Experience with research can be a great CV booster. It can be a great thing to talk about in your personal statement and during interviews, but it's, it's not mandatory. I'd focus more on knocking off those other big things that I listed. All right, and that's all the questions I've got. If you have other questions about requesting letters of recommendation or anything related to genetic counseling school, you've got a topic you'd like to see me record a video on, write them in the comments down below. Please like this video and subscribe. Take care guys. Bye.